The Tennessee Titans will use the Cleveland Browns' aggressiveness against them on their way to a victory. I'll explain how on a game plan edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, our game plan edition is brought to you by the Game Time app. Create an account, use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We have so much to talk about leading up to this Week Three matchup against the Cleveland Browns. The theme of our game plan episode today is using the Browns' aggressiveness against them. I'm going to tell you how the Titans can do that on offense. I'll tell you how the Titans can do that schematically on defense. I'll give my final prediction for the week and talk about some of the players that I am watching as well. Before we get into all of it, I do want to thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round on all apps and all ways for free. Make sure that you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day here on the Locked on Titans podcast. And shout out to my everydayers tuning in Monday through Friday. I got a ton of great content coming out for you guys every single week. Sunday, I'll be live immediately after the game for a 10 to 15 minute instant emotional reaction. Then I'll be back on Sunday night with a full 30 minute breakdown, including Tighten Up, Tighten Down, where we look at the good and bad performances from the game. Tuesday is always Tic Tac Tuesday, where I jump into the film, tell you what happened on the coach's tape, and we talk schematics for the episode. Wednesday is What's Next Wednesday. Look at what the big question is for the Titans going into their next game, and the Bengals are right around the corner. Thursday's crossover Thursday to get behind enemy lines information and insight. And then next Friday, we'll be back here talking about how the Tennessee Titans can pull off the victory. But with that said, We're going to talk about the Tennessee Titans offense, and I've been making an analogy throughout the week since I watched the Browns play, watched a little bit of the tape. It's like judo, okay? In judo, and look, I'm no martial arts expert. I tell you, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm definitely no martial artist, all right? But I know that in judo, you use the other person's body weight and the other person's momentum to get them where you want them to be. You use their power against them and as a guy who maybe isn't the biggest dude in the whole world things like that were always appealing to me when I was little so I was like oh okay but the Titans need to do that this week because the Browns defense is absolutely tremendous not only has the Browns defense not allowed a touchdown so far this year they haven't even let anybody into the red zone okay this is an aggressive attacking penetrating defense that likes to get downhill get into your face not give you any time They play tight man coverage on the back end. They have quick physical safeties. They're a good defense, folks. And I haven't even mentioned Miles Garrett, Zadarius Smith up front, okay? So how do the Titans take this aggressiveness and take this tenacity and this ferociousness that former Titans coach Jim Schwartz, now the D.C. in Cleveland, is going to bring to the table? You use that aggressiveness against them. I'm talking screens. I'm talking swing passes. Make sure that you use motion so that these guys that are pressed up on the line of scrimmage don't get free reign over guys when that when the ball is snapped. Use draws in the run game. Use counters. Misdirection. Use a couple reverses maybe. Some jet sweeps. The Titans don't really do traps a lot, but if they have any traps in the playbook, I would say it would be a good week to utilize some traps. And the Titans can definitely get some, some edge defenders coming up the field with tight ends coming in motion or coming across the formation and kicking them out. So I think that the Titans need to use that aggressiveness of the Browns and strike against them. That's why I am going to say this throughout the episode. I think it's a very big game for Tajay Spears. I think it's a game where we see a big play from Chickaconquo as well because the only logical thing to do Quick, tight end turnaround screens. Quick, little slip screens to the running back out of the backfield. Make sure that you run a couple of plays. Play action off that. Then try that play action into the slip screen. Get Derrick Henry on those quick swing passes out where he's got a guy 
going in motion before the snap. Hike, that guy in motion turns into a lead blocker and you swing it out to Henry to get on the perimeter. Those sort of things will take advantage of the aggressiveness of the Browns' defense. And I think those are good opportunities for the Titans to strike and catch big plays because when you're an aggressive defense like that, you come downhill like that, it leaves you open if you don't make that first initial tackle. If you don't make that first in the first initial stop, there's not as many people in the back end to stop a guy. All right, And I also want to say this. The Titans need to use more gap runs than zone runs this week when they're running the football. And to tell the difference, zone runs are what the Titans have been running for the last few years where you see Derrick Henry going out on the perimeter. The offensive line is kind of flowing with him, and then Henry picks a spot, turns up field, and goes. That's the outside zone runs. The Titans run a lot of inside zone stuff. But in the last few years, the Titans have been mixing in more gap runs, which is where you'll have a polar across the formation, a trap play, a counter play with, with two guys going across to get the guy on the other side, down blocks from the other offensive linemen. The Titans are starting to, to diversify that run game. Okay? They're going to need to use more of that. And again, like I said, the Titans don't run a lot of trap plays, but if they have some traps in their arsenal, a little motion to the strong side, weak side trap, the Jaguars run that play to Travis Etienne. It's absolutely fantastic. But if the Titans had any of that in their playbook this week, you use those plays because those are the type of plays where you use that aggressiveness against a guy who gets too far upfield. You can easily discard him from the run game. And, and those are the things that the Titans will have to do to catch these linebackers coming downhill and shooting through gaps and things like that. It's going to be very important. Honestly, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the pass game. We talk a lot about how to attack man coverage, bunch, pre-snap motion, at snap motion. Um, jet motion, orbit motion, rail motion, short motion, things like that to, to get these wide receivers a little bit more room at the line of scrimmage because the Browns are going to be pressing. That's how teams play the Titans anyway. We talk about it every single week because every single week that's what teams want to do. But these three matchups in a row, the Saints, the Chargers, and then the Browns, I mean, that's what they like to do anyway. So they're certainly not going to go away from that. So the Titans just need to be smart. And what's more important than anything is making sure that you have efficiency on first and second down so that you get yourself in third and short situations so that you can kind of spread things out a little bit, minimize the pass rush, get the ball out of your hands quickly. Third and short is going to be absolutely critical. The Titans need to try to avoid third down as much as they can with their first and second down efficiency. And I think the best way to do that is to use that aggressiveness of the Browns against them by using draws, motions, counters, screens, reverses, traps, gap runs. That, that's what the Titans need to do here. You use the aggressiveness of the Browns against them. That's the best way to do it. So with that being said, we're going to move into what the defense needs to do for the Titans to win this game. And it's all about shutting it down, shutting it down, shutting down that Cleveland Browns rushing attack, which the Titans pretty well equipped to do. So we're going to get into that in just a moment. Before we do, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Look, Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, but they have concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. I personally have used the game time app during the summer a couple of times. wanted to go to a few Cincinnati Reds games. I'm kind of a spontaneous guy. I don't like to plan things out too much. I got a great deal, got great seats, and I really like how they give you like a real picture of what the view is from your seat, and it's actually what the view is going to be when you show up there. I find that pretty incredible as well. So make sure that you guys snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price. Guarantee. Also want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by DoorDash. Are you missing the syrup for your pancakes? Do you just run out of your favorite coffee creamer? With DoorDash grocery delivery, you can get what you want right when you need it. Love the convenience of getting what you want right to your door? With DoorDash grocery delivery, you can stock up for the week or order last-minute cravings conveniently. 
you've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites. And now you can get grocery deliveries that actually deliver. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every dollar. You'll get exactly what you ordered or they'll make it right. So sit back, enjoy quality groceries, just like you picked them yourself. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code Locked On NFL at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply, that's 50% off. Up to $20, no min subtotal, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code Locked On NFL. Don't forget, that's code Locked On NFL for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. Titans fans, let's continue today's game plan edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. We talked about what the offense needs to do schematically to beat the Browns. Now I want to move into the defense. And then at the end of the show, I'm going to give my final prediction, talk about the players that I'm watching the most, and I'll tell you why the Titans need to unleash Tajay Spears. But before we get into the run defense, do want to thank you guys again for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen Each and every day, remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, always for free. Make sure that you get subscribed, stay subscribed to the Locked on Titans podcast where it's your team every day. But remember, the theme is to use the Browns' aggressiveness against them. We talked about how to do that on offense. Now we're going to talk about how to do it on defense. And for me, the big thing with the Browns, we talk about their aggressiveness On offense, it's different than the defense. The defense, we're talking about schematic aggressiveness, philosophical aggressiveness. With the Browns, we're talking about Deshaun Watson's carelessness. So Deshaun Watson is incredibly aggressive. He wants to, and what I mean by that is, he wants to break a sack. He never wants to go down. He never wants to play to end. He's always going to try to squirm out of the sack. He's always going to try to get out, get down the field, throw the ball, make big plays. He's never going to give up on a play ever. Deshaun Watson isn't a, hey, throw it away kind of guy. He is always looking to make a bigger, better play at all times until he's absolutely forced not to. Well, you know what happens sometimes when you play like that? You make mistakes. And what do mistakes usually look like, class? When you're playing quarterback, turnovers. Jeffrey Simmons said it on Thursday before practice in his interview with the media. Person who fumbles the most is the quarterback. It's because they have the ball the most. And Deshaun Watson doesn't just fumble. He throws picks, too. The Browns have six turnovers already this year. Six. So, it's pretty obvious what the Titans need to do is force turnovers. Now, how do they force those turnovers? You got to stop the run first. The number one thing that you have to do is stop the run. The Browns are leading the NFL in total yards on the ground with 404. That's 202 yards per game. Now, I know, I know, Nick Chubb was in the lineup for most of that. I get it. But Jerome Ford came in and looked pretty solid. And the Browns also picked up Kareem Hunt. And while I don't think Kareem Hunt is quite the player that he used to be, Kareem Hunt can still be a serviceable serviceable back and back up Jerome Ford. And make no mistake about it, even without Nick Chubb, the Browns can run the ball well. Why? Because schematically, they run the ball well. And they have a really good run-blocking offensive line. So, the Titans, first and foremost, have to stop the run. But that's exactly what they're equipped to do. In the last 17 games, the Tennessee Titans have a historically good run defense. Over the last 17 games, the Titans have allowed 2.9 yards per carry. That is the best 17-game streak that the NFL has seen since 2007. The Browns yards per carry, 5.4. So who's going to win? Will the Titans' historic run defense over the last 17 games make it 18 games? 
and hold the Browns to far less than what they're used to getting? Or will this Browns offense that has churned out good rushing performances for years on years, will they continue to be a good run offense? Because if they are, Deshaun Watson's going to be in third and short. And then you're not going to be able to create those mistakes. See, the Titans stop the run. They get the Browns in third and long. They can play tight man coverage. They can disguise and play zone. They can bring pressure. And that's what the Titans need to do. For me, this is a big man man coverage week. Other than Amari Cooper, who scares you for the Browns? David Njoku's pretty good. I would say he's their second best option, right? But Donovan People jones Elijah Moore has talent, but I wouldn't say that he's scary. You know what I mean? They use him in clever ways. The Titans will have to be ready for that for sure. But I'll throw Roger Moore on Elijah or Roger McCreary on Elijah Moore in man coverage, and I'll live and I'll I'll see how that goes. I'm willing to look at that. So if you have if Christian Fulton is back, he could take on Amari Cooper. You could shadow Amari Cooper with with one zone guy over the top. I think the Titans have a really good chance to send five and get pressure on Watson immediately and make him do what he does. Try to make extra plays, and then you can knock out the ball. Try to make extra plays, throw off balance, turns into turnovers. I think the Titans can force the Browns into turnovers by playing tight man coverage and bringing five-man pressures, which is not what the Titans' game plan has been the last few weeks. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what I expect the Titans to do. And if you get the Browns being overly aggressive and you put them in those situations, they're going to give you the football. And against this really good defense that the Browns have, The Titans need their defense to create those turnovers to give the offense more advantageous situations to score because the Titans aren't going 75, 80 yards on the Browns' defense all day. They're just not doing it. So, going to need some turnovers from the defense. The best way to do that, play man coverage, create third and longs, five-man pressures on Watson, pressure burst pipes. And the Titans need to use that Watson aggressiveness against the Browns and turn it into turnovers. So, that's what I want to see from the offense and the defense. Now I want to talk about some individual matchups, kind of confirm my prediction for this game as well, and talk a little bit about Tajay Spears. Before we do that, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. Look, here's what you do. It's this simple. You pick two to six players, and you look at their stat line, and you say whether that player is going to do more or less. So they'll have Patrick Mahomes, two passing touchdowns. Travis Kelsey, 50 receiving yards. Justin Jefferson, 100 receiving yards. Lamar Jackson, one passing touchdown. Just for example, things like that. And you just say more or less. And if you hit all of your picks, you can win up to 25 times your money This football season, you can make an entry in less than 60 seconds. It's really that easy, and you don't have to play against all these sharks and pros and thousands of bots and all that. It's just you against the prize picks projections. That simple. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL or use the code locked on NFL for your first deposit match up to $100. That's right. You go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL. You're going to get a first deposit match up to $100. It's prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Titans fans, let's cap off today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. It's a game plan episode, getting ready for this week three matchup against the Cleveland Browns. I'm going to give my final prediction, talk about some individuals that I'll be watching for before we get into it. Do want to thank you guys for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. I want to remind you guys, football season is here and Locked on is kicking up our coverage with Locked on NFL kickoff live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On NFL YouTube channel. So it's going to be live here on Locked On Titans. So you could just tune in, hit the notification bell so you know when all the content goes live. You got hosts like uh, Tanitra Batiste, Jarvis Davis, Kyle Krabs. They're going to break down every game on the NFL slate to get you ready for your team's matchup, your fantasy lineups, your betting angles, and more. Plus, get in depth 
local analysis from our stable of NFL hosts, including your boy, across the country who know these teams better than anyone else. You know that I do. Find Locked On NFL Kickoff Live every Friday from 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern on any Locked On NFL YouTube channel. But we talked about the Titans' offense using the Browns' aggressiveness against them. We talked about how the Titans' defense can use Deshaun Watson's aggressiveness against them to create turnovers. Now I want to talk about three individual matchups that I think will truly, truly decide this game. Number one is Chris Hubbard and Andre Dillard against the edge rushers of the Browns. Zadarius Smith, Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett mostly rushes on the left-hand side, so he would be going against Andre Dillard with Zadarius Smith going against Chris Hubbard, but they move Miles Garrett up and down the offensive line. They really do. But what I do know is that the majority of the time, it'll be those two edge rushers against the tackles. And if they get absolutely destroyed, and it could be even worse than last week, it, the Titans don't have a chance. They don't have a chance to win. So the tackles have to step up here and have some wins and give Tannehill the opportunity to take advantage of the aggressiveness. And you run these screens, it's going to get offensive linemen out on the perimeter. Going to need a big game from Andre Dillard out there. He was big in that overtime drive last week on that toss sweep to Tajay Spears. Going to need him again. Because those sorts of plays take advantage of the aggressiveness of the defense. All right. Two, Christian Fulton on Amari Cooper. If I'm the Titans, I want Sean Murphy Bunting, who's bigger and more physical against Donovan Peoples-Jones. I want Christian Fulton, who is quicker and faster against Amari Cooper, and I'm going to give him safety help. And then I want Roger McCreary on Elijah Molden. Or Elijah Moore. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Titans on the brain, right? So th those are my matchups, okay? And David Njoku is very good, but I'll put Amani Hooker or Kevin Byard on him. I don't think it's going to be a disaster. I, I certainly don't. So, um, I like those matchups, but the one that matters most is Christian Fulton on Cooper because he's clearly the best player. Amari Cooper is the only guy you can't let beat. Can't let beat you. That's how I feel about the tackles. If Miles Garrett destroys the game, you're done. If Amari Cooper destroys the defense, you're done. Those two guys you have to stop, and I'll live with everybody else. I will. Lastly, Tajay Spears. And sided Chicken Conquo. They got to get these guys involved in the screen game. I think this is a big game for Spears. I think the better matchup is for Spears. The better run types are for Spears this week. I think his quickness is going to be needed against the quickness of the Browns defenders. I think Henry against some quicker guys can, you know, he doesn't get his momentum going and he doesn't break tackles the way he did a couple of years ago. So uh, with the Browns shooting up, I, I think this is a Spears week. This is a big week for Tajay Spears. That, that's kind of my star of the game that I'm looking for there. My final prediction is the same as it was yesterday, 17-16 Titans. I think the Titans find a way to get two touchdowns. The Browns only get one. Um, it's going to be a low-scoring game. That's why I like the Titans plus three. I'm 2-0 and against the spread, betting the Titans right now. So um, now because I said that, I'll probably get messed up. But uh, I, I just, in a low-scoring game like this, you're getting points. I love that. The over-under is like 39 and a half on FanDuel. Last I checked, that's kind of dangerous. But if I had to choose, I'd had to go under. So you want a fantasy pick, Tajay Spears. You want a prediction, 17-16 Titans. Obviously, Titans plus three, take the under. If you could tease them up, though. If you could tease them up. I really like that. But either way, that is another game plan edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Week three game plan edition. This... Absolutely going to be a battle. Absolutely going to be a battle. It's be a tough one. It'll be a close one. But I'll be back on Sunday to break it all down. That is going to do it for me today, folks. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titan.